So, here we're dealing with a story, we're dealing with narrative. As we said last time, you deal with narrative differently from the way that you deal with Paul and his letters. And it's crucial to understanding we're not reading Paul, or dealing with the redeemed New Testament church here, living in the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the benefit of that. Which is why some people have a problem with God doing things like this in the Old Testament. The reason human beings have a problem with God doing acts like he was doing here through Samson is because we live with the fuller revelation and the fuller experience of the New Testament looking back on it. Samson was living in awful, violent days. There was no law in the land. There was no king in Israel. And everyone did what was right in his own eyes and they did it to one another. There are violent episodes in the Old Testament because human nature is violent. It's nasty. Left to itself, that's what you get. And scripture is showing us too that there is also a sovereign God who is the judge of all the earth, who does what pleases him, whose ways are always right, whether we can see and acknowledge that or not. And as yet, we don't get it, sometimes. But we know him. And we know who he is and what he is and what he does. And the difference is that we trust him. Well, we don't get it. We'll say more about that before we finish, perhaps, depending on how time goes. Here we go, verse 15. Samson finds a fresh, it says red, jawbone of a donkey and makes complete donkeys of the Philistine army. But he's not a Philistine because he then gets very poetical. He's not a Philistine in the sense we mean. Because he writes poetry. Here's the warrior hero who writes poetry. What's wrong with that? That's marvellous. Proper man writing poems. Anybody write poems? <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. Verse 16, that victory statement of Samson, quite poetic. Commentators struggle to get it into English. NIV is not bad for the first phrase, with donkey's jawbone, I've made donkeys of them, that's quite good. The second phrase is harder. One attempt goes, with the jawbone of an ass, I've piled them on mass. <laughs> that's quite good, isn't it? You know, you're reading these dry old commentaries, and all of a sudden you turn the corner and, oh, look at that, that's funny. Um, that's the sort of idea. What do you make of such violence? Samson's a man of his age. And it's a very, very brutal, violent age. It, it's sort of 1060, 1070 BC. And of course here we are with the benefit of the New Testament and all it tells us about how God is restoring those broken human relationships and putting things right. And from our perspective we look at that and we say, mm, yeah. We should and we would, but those days were different days, and God was having to deal with all sorts. And of course, to an extent to which the guy who's writing all this down, the editor of Judges, is, is looking back on earlier primitive days. He's looking back from the days of the monarchy, and he's pointing out how dreadful it was back then, before there was a king in Israel. Bit of an apologist for, the, for David and the United Monarchy. And then, of course, you've got to allow for the way that the sovereignty of God controls the situation. God is sovereign and able to deal with all those things that are going on, so that his judgment is proportionate and just and right. And God does take human beings as his instruments, as his tools, quite apart from the quality of life of the individual. Israel is learning and growing, and Israel is still a babe in infant, moral infancy.